Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to walk you through a very important feature on the Alpha One which is your Save Load Settings feature. Now of course uh, a custom setup of your Alpha One is critical for success because we obviously want to uh, set up the camera so we can quickly grab different genres of images without deep diving into the main menus. Basically you want to set up uh, the function menu, your custom keys, your my menu and also the memories, the shooting memories on the shoot mode dial and the recall custom hold memories. Now the great thing about this Alpha One is we can now save all of those settings into a single cam set file onto our memory card and then back that up onto our computer. Now just go to the page two of that uh, yellow toolbox icon on your camera, look for the uh, save load settings and then save it to your memory card one. Now of course you will want to create a backup of that because if you format the card that saved uh, cam set file will be deleted. So when you open up your memory card on your computer just look for that Sony folder. It's quite visible on the CF Express cards but it is um, hidden inside a folder folder called private when using an SD card. So once you've found that folder just put it somewhere safe on your computer. That means if you ever have to initialize your camera and start from scratch it'll only take you a few seconds to basically restore your camera to your custom setup. Now I've actually shared my uh, camera setup uh, with my premium patrons on patreon.com. So if you're looking uh, for my settings then you could just to head along there. It's just uh, $10 uh, for your first month and there's no contract or commitment to go beyond that first month. And you can also download this 500 page ebook for the Alpha One, which is a great, great companion for my camera settings file. If you have joined Patreon, just uh, uh, type in the search word uh, camset in that field there. It'll bring you up to the camset files for the Alpha 92, the Alpha 7R4, and also now the Alpha One camera. You just want to uh, click on the link which will take you over to Dropbox. Um, look for those three little dots there for the download link. You'll be downloading the entire Sony folder. Don't go inside of that Sony folder looking for the actual cam set file. Once you've um, done that you're basically going to switch out the Sony folder on your card with my Sony folder. That Sony folder will only appear on your memory card if you have first saved your own camera settings file. Okay, you, it's optional whether you back those up if not, but if you decide that you don't like my camera settings, you can always return to your own by replacing your own Sony folder. Okay, remember slot one on the Alpha One is the uppermost slot. So just uh, pop in the card once you've got my Sony folder loaded and then simply go back to page two, um, the uh, save load feature and load my settings. It just takes a couple of uh, seconds to reboot the camera and it doesn't matter whether you're using NTSC or PAL as your region setting. It should install that without um, overwriting or changing. Obviously, I'm in a PAL region, but your NTSC C should be preserved if you're working in North America. Okay, one of the uh, important things for me is um, when I'm uh, saving all of this cam set is I've also saved the shoot mode memories on one, two or three. Something I refer to my as PAL workflow, portrait, action, landscape. 95% of what I shoot these days starts with one of those three settings. I am able to fine tune those settings when I go in, but it just gives me a quick starting point for shooting portraits with very shallow depth of field, i.e. single portraits, um, action with uh, fast shutter speeds to freeze the action, and landscape with slower shutter speeds, um, stop down to f11 for maximum depth of field, okay, when maximum di dynamic range because the eyes so is kept low. So I outline all of those in my ebook. Now with an Alpha One of course there are a couple of settings that can't be contained by those memories. They're in the top left dial on the top of the camera, the focus mode and drive mode. And one of the things that Sony has left out of that is the display quality finder frame rate. Now I've put that in the FN menu. 
And depending on whether you're wanting maximum resolution or maximum refresh rate for shooting action sports, you will have to go and change that manually for whatever reason it isn't being held by the memories that you save to the shoot mode dial. So there you can see is my um, optimum settings for shooting um, uh, action and my optimum shootings, uh, settings for shooting handheld landscapes. If you typically um, uh, want to uh, shoot on a tripod with your landscapes, you'll just change the ISO auto setting perhaps to ISO 100. Now uh, I've just listed here the settings that you'll just double check as you move into uh, shoot mode one on the uh, on the top of the camera. Uh, just check your drive mode and focus mode is what you want. I will typically shoot in the drive mode set to low, so I'm not having to complete uh, continually press the shutter release as I'm taking a sequence of portraits of somebody who's slowly moving. I'll check my finder frame rate in the FN menu is set to standard for maximum resolution in the finder. Um, steady shot mode will be set to 2 just in case I'm panning with somebody moving slowly. Obviously that steady shot mode 2 is on the lens. Okay, Steady shot, uh, if, if you don't have a lens with steady shot settings, it'll just be on the camera itself. Again, in the FN menu. Now if you are using one of the GM lenses uh, or there is a single uh, G lens that has an aperture ring on the barrel of the lens, if you want my memory to set the aperture for you just make sure you've got the aperture ring turned to A. This will let the camera control the aperture rather than turning the, shoot, uh, the aperture ring on the lens. Now I've set up um, human as the default and again that subject detection I've put into the FN menu so if you switch uh, from taking a picture of a human to maybe a dog then you'll just um, uh, change the subject detection to animal. Now again, if you quickly have to um, uh, shoot things that are rapidly moving, then again you'll just uh, turn the shoot mode dial to number 2. You might want to increase uh, the drive mode to high or high plus for um, your maximum frame rates. Again, if you're panning the camera, check your lens is set to steady shot uh, mode 2. Again, uh, if you are using a GM lens, just again, just check the, uh, the aperture ring is turned to A. And again, subject detection. So you'll get into a habit of just checking these few things as you turn your shoot mode dial. And again for landscape, um, this time your um, uh, drive mode will often be turned to uh, single shooting so we're not taking bursts of images of your landscape. And again find a frame rate set to standard. Steady shot mode on the lens if you're using a, a telephoto zoom lens should now be moved to number one so you get your maximum stability with those slower shutter speeds. Okay, if you want to um, look at another video tutorial about how I use that 123 PAL workflow, just check out my Memory Mastermind video tutorial. It does go into a lot of detail about how I sometimes modify my PAL settings. For instance, this is a landscape, but because I'm on a moving boat, I've shot the landscape with my action settings to freeze the movement of the boat that I am on. And similarly, I call my portrait settings portraits but it really is a shallow depth of field um, setting for portraits so it's very suitable for isolating any subject from the background and of course if you're using portrait settings for group portraits you will start to stop that aperture down maybe to f5 6 or 8 just remember um, once you turn the shoot mode dial away from number one and back to number one it restores my default settings now I've set in the, um, the shoot mode uh, dial when turned to movies for 4K movies, uh, XAVCS 4K, uh, 50p if you're a PAL, 60p if you're in uh, NTSC, uh, with the 10-bit depth. Now if you just press the um, red button on the camera without turning the shoot mode dial to movies, it will record 8-bit movies instead. Now I've set up uh, the function menu both for stills and movies so it's worth checking in the ebook exactly what I've assigned there and perhaps why I've assigned those settings. And of course there are um, additional memory 
memories, so three additional memories. These are the register custom shoot settings, often referred to as recall custom hold, because you do need to hold a custom key to override your settings. Typically, I use these when I need to um, not freeze my subject in action anymore. I need to do some panning blur. So just by holding the uh, the focus hold button on the lens, which I've uh, reassigned to a recall custom hold, which lowers the shutter speed so I can create some background blur. I don't have to uh, touch the shoot mode dial or drive mode or anything um, or adjust any individual settings. I just hold down a custom key. And also I've got a, a recall custom hold when again I need to uh, lower the shutter speed and just go into single shooting because the action has come to a temporary halt. Check out my custom keys. Again, I've got different uh, custom key setups for stills and movies and uh, also for playback as well. I do like using that voice memo if I need to record um, a, a particular name of somebody I've been shooting at a parade or a demonstration or a sports meet. I'll just uh, talk to the camera so that uh, voice memo rec uh, recording is recorded with the individual file. Now, if you do decide to um, change any of my settings, especially in the one, two, three, the PAL settings, you will need to go individually into one on your shoot mode dial, make the uh, the setting change, and then go into that camera set memory on page four of the shooting memory, and then resave that to either one, two, or three. Uh, and, and again, if you're going to change the setting for all one, two, and three, you'll need to do that three times. If you just want a system-wide change, you'll just do that in the P, A, S, or M modes there. Okay, so that concludes my camera setup. It is a very valuable feature and I do encourage you, if you don't load my settings, just to save your own settings. If uh, there ever is a recall on this product or you have your camera going back to Sony for repair, um, it'll often come back completely initialized. So you'll have to set up that camera from scratch if you don't have your own cam set file. Okay, so I will catch you later. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador.